Okay, so just a quick primer on normal mapping. Um, the main point that I'll make in this video is just about the silhouette. Um, you need to be thinking about how exactly the source material, um, so in this example, say you're making this jet engine, uh, how exactly this source material is going to be um, created in an optimized geometry. Um, you can't go and model all of these small details uh, because you're going to end up with a, a high poly model that defeats the point. You're trying to make something that's optimized, works in game, so there's always going to be compromises. You can't simply just recreate exactly what you see. Um, so here we have an example of this model having been made for a game engine, and here are the key components, so these large shapes have been modeled out, um, but all these smaller components have been put in texture maps. Um, so another example is from, um, you know, you're trying to make the underside of a car. Now you're generally not going to see a huge amount of detail. Um, the player is, it's not like the player is going to walk, walk up and look at all the minute detail in here, uh, unless you're actually making some sort of car mechanical um, maintenance type game, some sort of simulator. There's no need for a huge amount of detail. Um, so let's take a look at this shot from The Last of Us. So a car that's uh, a wreck, obviously, on its back, and we can see the underside. And there's really only the foundation-type shapes, these, these big key shapes that are necessary to create um, the concept of what we're looking at. So, you know, this, this um, exhaust pipe going all the way through and the, um, the axle there. Uh, as opposed to all of this sort of high level of detail. Um, it's about trying to find a compromise. So, this example um, is basically I've got this high poly model. Now, we'll assume that this is basically our source material. So, you've, um, you've modeled this thinking this is the sort of thing you want. Um, you really need to be thinking about what you're trying to do for the in-game version. Now, currently we've got um, 140,000 triangles, so that's that's pointless for something in game, and this is probably just some panel on the side of a wall somewhere. Um, now, you might be thinking, okay, well, you could um, bake this onto a 2D plane, so it's two triangles, and that'll work really well. Um, we could definitely get away with that sort of texture, and so here's one I've actually generated, and it's a very simple bake. It's simply a matter of um, projecting this plane um, through having the projection axis straight through the high poly model and it'll just directly bake all of this detail. Um, and it, it works pretty well, it's a fairly good effect. If we uh, just take a close look at that, you can definitely see the illusion of depth. Um, it's, it seems quite nice, but of course you start to lose detail. Um, it's, it's a, obvious that it's an illusion. If you walk up to that on the side in-game, um, the player straight away knows that that's you know, just a, um, a texture map. And it's, it's not super convincing from that angle. But it depends on the need. Um, you know, if this is just some sort of small detail in a, an otherwise highly detailed area, then you could probably get away with this. But if uh, it's something that the player's really going to notice and there's not, not a lot of other detail in, a say, a room or something, um, you might want some more detail. So it's about deciding uh, on, on what sort of balance, what sort of compromise you want to make. So in this case, the key shapes are made. Uh, it's not like the high poly where we have all the pipes and extra bits. And you'll notice from the side, I've got um, these pipes extrude a fair way out. So that works pretty well. Problem is, of course, these pipes, these smaller pipes uh, on this high poly aren't going to appear. Um, so we'll end up seeing, seeing these baked into the back wall there. Um, but that may not be a problem. If we take a look at this next model, um, often what you need to do is um, adjust your concept. So the source material that you're baking, uh, just like with these photos where we've gone, okay, we don't need all of this detail, we'll just make adjustments and um, 
take some liberties in the general shapes. Um, probably the Last of Us image was a better example where um, there's significant compromises in the actual geometry that's certainly not mechanically accurate to a real car, but who cares? It looks cool. Uh, we understand that that is the underside of a car um, and you know visually it's quite nice, so that's good enough. So in this particular example, we've basically taken this pipe section and uh, moved it back, rotated it a little, and because it doesn't stick out enough, um, or as much as, as this section, it would be possible to bake that and still maintain quite a lot of detail. So if we bake uh, this one directly onto a plane, uh, that's the sort of effect we get. Um, I'll just point out the first image that I uh, demonstrated, so this 2D plane, the first um, normal map, wasn't actually baked from this, it was baked from this low poly. And you'll notice that because um, when we look at it from the flat angle, how they match up, and that's because this is rotated and adjusted to be aligned uh, with this sort of cavity. Um, baking this directly onto a plane isn't going to work um, as well as this. You'll end up with a noticeable depth problem. So instead of this pipe, for example, that looks quite um, symmetrical, it'll end up looking something like this where we'll notice the top and the bottom section will be flat. So this bake definitely worked a lot better. Um, but again, we have this problem with this being uh, two-dimensional. So it's, there's not a very good illusion when we look at it from the side. And so back to our final example is the compromise. So you know, we only have uh, 348 triangles, so it's very low poly, um, and that's quite acceptable, um, even for a minor prop. But the illusion of depth is, is much more significant because we, actual have, we have actual geometry in there uh, to create that look that we're after. And once we apply the normal map, um, that works really well. Now, the issue is uh, creating a normal map for this sort of image is um, more work than this. This is a very quick bake, it's just literally projecting uh, this, these two objects on top of each other with floating geometry. Uh, this one, you need to um, explode the object. So you need to bake um, each individual piece separately. So let's just go through and take a quick look. Uh, keep in mind, this next section is edited um, for speed, but uh, it'll give you an idea of the workflow. If you were to try and just bake uh, the whole model onto the, um, a low poly object, it's, it's not going to work very well. Uh, it depends on the circumstances, but you can see here when I create a cage, uh, the envelope is distorted. Um, if I bring it in close and unhide the high poly, you can see it's cutting off the piping. And if I try to move the envelope out, it will um, get horribly distorted. I could try to edit that uh, envelope. You can edit them and try to clean that up, but ultimately it's not going to give me a very nice result. Um, and if we do a quick bake with this sort of uh, setup, we can take a look at the result and you get all sort of art, all sorts of artifacts. So we'll turn on the um, normal map. You can see it's getting weird shadowing, there's bits cut off, it's just terrible. So what we need to do is explode the model and bake these in individual components. It's really the only way to go um, to ensure clean sections. So firstly, what I've got here is um, just the, the panel itself with the wires. You can see the main pipe and the sort of hexagon thing um, aren't in this image. So I'm just baking that onto a plane. Um, now that plane is obviously not going to be used in game because I'm trying to make it um, to that low poly object. But the plane here um, gives me a nice bake with the cables going through, and I'll just compile those. Or I'm, I'm going to compile all these normal maps um, like this together in Photoshop at the end of the process. But that's given me a nice clean bake for the first stage. Now I'll just go through each individual piece. So here's the hexagon. Now this will show us a, a, a nice problem that we need to, um, well it's not a nice problem, but it's, it's an issue that we need to be aware of. Now I've just done a regular bake, and if we zoom in, 
um, you can see these corners have these black lines. Now this is a, a very common problem and it's to do with our hard edges. If we look at the normal map, you can see the problem is these two faces are joined together. And so we're getting the shading on either side. So what we need to do is actually separate those. We can see here in our um, UV editor, we're basically getting uh, the normal map is trying to make the two edges of the plane um, merge. So it's a bit of an unusual um, approach uh, for low poly modeling if you're not used to normal mapping, but you need to separate those UVs. You need to split the seams. So anywhere where you want a hard edge, you really need to go in there, cut the UVs. So I'm just um, turning on my border edges, texture border edges, so we can see quite clearly I've cut all of those edges. And so now that they're cut, uh, they also need to be separated um, have a little bit of padding. So I'm just going through and moving each one of those faces out. So I'll just speed that up real quick. So now if we do another bake with that UV layout, you can see because of the separation in those shells, we're getting very nice uh, soft edges, soft hard edges, if that makes any sense. And it's because of this um, separation. Whereas when they're joined, um, it has no option but to draw that little black line because we've got two UV seams coming together. So now we'll go through and just do this pipe. This is a really straightforward object. This is a good example of, uh, in some situations, it's almost not even worth normal mapping. Um, you can see there's very minimal effect. It certainly works and it is actually worth doing the normal map, um, but just be aware that it's sometimes uh, certain things, such as a cylinder like this, Really, all we're getting is a softer edge around um, where they join just here. So you can see when I turn that off, we're looking at the low poly there. There's no indication of um, that hard edge, that sort of beveled hard edge. And the normal map is, is creating a nicer illusion there. So now for the actual uh, plane itself, the, the main section. Once again, it's a very straightforward bake. Okay, so now we'll just go through Photoshop and you can see I've got each of the normal maps uh, opened in Photoshop. We just need to combine these. Uh, this one I've got the UV layout, so I'll use that as my main scene. So I've got my UV layout on top of one of the normal maps I've created from the uh, hexagon. Uh, sorry, this one's the hexagon, so I'm just going to select the whole uh, texture and copy that and I'll just paste it on a new layer and all I need to do really is delete I'm just moving it down so I can see my UVs but if I delete um, the sections of that layer that don't have any objects on them that'll, that will reveal the normal map underneath that I need And now I can just hit Control E to merge those two layers together. So we've done that one, and now we'll grab these um, pipes. Now this one isn't overlaid uh, on, an, on an, my low poly object, it's just been baked onto a, a random plane. So I'm just selecting the, the bit I want, turning on my UVs and I'm pasting that section and I'm just going to uh, manually change the shape to get it where I need it. And now I just need to delete the sections that I don't want. Uh, so I'm just using the lasso tool to select just the piping, which is the only section I really need. Shift Control I to inverse my selection and just deleting that. I'll jump back to my final texture map. And same as before, we're just cutting, uh, pasting our normal map in and then deleting the sections of, of that layer that we, that we don't need. And coming back um, to these pipes, I'm just going to, there's a couple of ways you could approach this. So ideally you'd want to go through uh, with the eraser and just manually clean up the bits. 
Uh, so basically I've got the eraser tool and I've got the opacity down. You could just go through, um, so I'm sped, sped up a little bit here, but uh, erasing those sections to get a nice clean normal map. But um, for, for speed, I'm just going to use the magic wand tool to select those colors and delete them. That definitely gives me a bit of pixelation in the normal map. So that's far from ideal, uh, but it does the job, at least for this. Um, really what I need to do now is grab that eraser tool and just clean up the, the pixelated edges um, that's a, a result of the, um, the magic wand selection. The last issue here in the Photoshop file is this uh, in the upper right corner, this um, main panel. Because the high poly is smoothed, we've got those curved edges. So basically if I just grab the eraser tool, uh, make it nice and large and turn the opacity right down, I can just go through and um, just quickly erase out, soften out those edges. I need to make a layer um, with the normal map color underneath so that I'm we're not seeing transparency underneath, we're seeing the, the original normal map color. And so the final result is pretty strong. Um, you can see we're definitely getting the illusion of the cables, um, the proper three-dimensional depth. Uh, we've got nice soft edges on that hexagon. Uh, so we're not seeing those little black lines, the normal map artifacts. We're not seeing uh, weird shadows around the place or overly wavy lines or um, strange artifacts from normal maps. Uh, so basically, the workflow that you need to follow if you're going for something a little bit more complex than simply a plane is exploding your model into the different sections and individually baking those and then combining them together in Photoshop. Uh, but I mean, it all comes down to making that decision right at the start of the process of um, how much detail you're going for, what bits need to have geometry, what bits need to be normal mapped, um, making that decision early and accepting from the start that there's a certain amount of work involved. Uh, the more detail you add in actual geometry, of course, the more detail you'll need to clean up in your normal mapping process.